Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Night Vision. I'm Samantha. And I'm Jack. Today marks our first episode returning from the spring break, and we've got a packed schedule ahead, so let's dive right in. First up, Studio 216 will be hosting its yearly event, Miscast, this Thursday, after school. As the name may suggest, at Miscast, students will perform musical theater numbers that they normally wouldn't be cast in or have the chance to perform on stage. Next Tuesday, BCA is hosting its annual College Expo. Representatives from various universities and colleges will be on campus to speak with students about their programs and admissions. It's a great opportunity to explore different options and learn more about what you want to pursue after graduation, especially for the current juniors who will be applying to college next year. Tonight is BCA's Literary Magazine Lit Mag's Music and Poetry Night. The event will run from 4.30 to 8.30 p.m. and includes a variety of performances from students within and outside the club. Here with us today is the club's editor-in-chief, Ilu Okte. Hi, Ilu. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Thank you for having me. So first of all, for those who are watching that don't know, what is Lit Mag? Lit Mag is a student-run Wednesday and morning club that publishes magazine editions throughout the year. We collect writing and art submissions from students at BCA, and we compile them into magazines that are released through our emails and on our website. And what role do you think that this artistic expression plays here at the community at BCA? I think it definitely plays an important role, especially because our school is so science and math focused. It's important that we remember the creative talents and abilities of students at BCA as well, and I think LIMAG showcases that very well. So when will LIMAG's next edition be coming out? Our next edition will be our spring edition, which will be coming out in early May. And then can you tell us a little bit about this music and poetry night that LIMAG will be having tonight? So Music and Poetry Night is our annual event that we host in Upper Calf. We will be having a lot of music, singing, songs, instruments, and also spoken word poetry performances. And then we'll also have a dinner together with attendees. And what went into planning this event? It definitely took a while to get a lot of performers and people who will come, organizing the food and also the different instruments and te technical things that we'll be using from Mr. Lemma and Mr. Spinelli. That was important, and that's what went into it. And then finally, speaking of performers, will you be performing tonight? Yes, I'll be performing one of my own poems. That's it. Thank you so much for joining us, Ilu, and good luck tonight. Thank you. To celebrate the beginning of spring, Stuco is hosting Spirit Week next week, starting with Pajama Day this Monday. Later in the week is Tie-Dye Tuesday, Workout Wednesday, Fireboy vs. Water Girl Thursday, and Aloha Friday. More information can be found on Outlook or Instagram. To conclude this episode of Night Vision, we will be showing our first Night Vision Spotlight. Here, we have an exclusive interview with a BCA faculty member and expert tape flipper, the one and only Mr. Wilson. Uh, my name is David Wilson. I teach English, mostly IB language for juniors, and I've been teaching for 20 years altogether. Seven, this is the end of my 17th year at BCA. I think it was probably my first year at BCA, I was giving a quiz in class and there was a meter stick in the room and I was just walking around fidgeting with the meter stick during the quiz and there just happened to be a roll of tape on the ground. So I took the meter stick, I slapped the tape, it flipped, the, me the tape flipped onto the meter stick. So then class was taking a quiz, I have a meter stick with a piece of tape at the end of it and I just started flipping it like flipping a pancake or something. And um, the ki like, kids just seemed weirdly fascinated with this. So then afterwards, a couple of the kids in class tried to flip the tape, and we found out it was actually harder than it seemed. Um, and then, so then during our free time in class, kids would try to see how many times they could flip it in a row. And we'd have little contests to see just how many consecutive flips we could do with it. When COVID shut the school down, so I, I, during class, often when I'm just lecturing the class or talking to the class about something, I'll just do little tape flips, just absent-mindedly. And so, when COVID shut shut us down, the kids in the class were like, "Oh, we might never see another tape flip again." So at that time, we couldn't zoom with students, right? So we had to just either like put things on a message board online or I started making YouTube videos for lessons. Um, and then to keep it interesting, and then also to give my kids something to do at home, I started making a daily tape flip video 
that I put on Schoology um, during that year of COVID. Um, and my favorite one, I think, was when I lit, I went in my backyard, I lit the tape on fire, and then I flipped a burning uh, roll of tape. There's like, there's every year I'm like, all right, I've taken this as far as it can go. It's time to retire this little uh, ridiculous skill. But then every year I, something new comes along and we uh, push it a little further. The most impressive one ever was when I took the roll of tape, took a meter stick, balanced it in the roll of tape, and then held the roll of tape with the, the other meter sticks that I'm not holding. And then, this is very hard, and it's very rarely successfully done, flip the meter, the, the tape with the meter stick in it, so the meter stick and the tape flip while you're holding a meter stick, and then you catch that roll of tape and the meter stick has fallen but stays balanced on the bottom of it. That's the hardest trick by far, but when it happens, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like, like, I don't, like what's, what's something, it's like seeing the Northern Lights or something. Like you might travel to see the Northern Lights, but you don't know that you're going to see them. But when you do, it, it's worth the, worth the trip. So that's the, that's the hardest one and it's the best one. So I would, what advice would I give to somebody who wanted to start flipping tape? There are a couple of things that are important. One is you have to have a, uh, a roll of tape that's not too heavy. So if you, if you see this roll of tape, there's another one around here somewhere that will, is on my desk. So this roll of tape, you can't use this, it's too heavy, too much tape on there. So you got to start using up some tape, right? Like otherwise you're just wasting tape. So start, get a, get a big roll of tape, use it up until it's about that big. And then that's the perfect weight, right? Because you don't want it too heavy. And then you have to get a meter stick that isn't too flimsy. Like uh, this one's pretty good. Let me see, this one's a little too heavy, but there's some that are too flimsy. This one seems like, this is like the, the three bears, Goldilocks. Uh, this one seems good. You want like a good natural wood feel to your meter stick that's not too flimsy, not too heavy, and then a piece of tape that is um, not too heavy. And then when kids are struggling to flip the tape, they usually, um, I give them a little bit, usually they're doing one of two things when they flip it. They have the tape too far in so they can't get it off or they're flipping it too hard. The standard advice that I give kids when they're struggling to flip the tape is I tell them to be the tape, not the meter stick. Now, I don't know what that means, but it sounds like it means something. It sounds like there's some like Zen wisdom in it, and maybe there is, but um, I think you just have to, um, I don't know, you maybe have natural talent for tape flipping, good hand-eye coordination, and then just stick with it. Who knew a roll of tape could be so interesting? This has been Night Vision, your go-to television show for BCA news, highlights, and more. I'm Jack. And I'm Samantha. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next Friday here on Night Vision.